180, Isn't the Love of Jesus Something Wonderful? Page 180, if you would stand with me. <clears throat> Page 180. There will never be a sweeter story, story of the Savior's love divine, love that brought him from the realms of glory. Just to save a sinful soul of mine Isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? Wonderful, wonderful Oh, isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? Wonderful it is to me We're at page 180 on that second verse Boundless as the universe around me My heart can truly sing. Isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? Wonderful, wonderful. Oh, isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? Wonderful it is to me. On that last, love beyond our human comprehending. Love of God in Christ, how can it be? This will be my theme in never ending. Great redeeming love of Calvary. Isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? Wonderful, wonderful. Oh, isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? it is to me. Great job. You may be seated. Boys and girls, come on down. Good morning, good morning. One more here. Little ones. All righty. Come on, guys. All right, we're going to do... A few more kids coming on here. That's awesome. <laughs> Only a boy named David. You guys know that one? Okay. All right. Here we go. Ready? 
You didn't drink any of this, did you? Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll put that right there. All right, it's good to be here. Yeah. Pastor, he approached me last weekend. You know, we had our dinner, and I said, uh-oh, pastor's coming at me. I know something's up here. Sure enough, he said, were you filming for Sunday school? I said, I guess so. I'm not a real elegant speaker, but uh, I said, yeah, I'll do it. And, um, you know, it should be uh, something that we want to do filling in, you know, the Word of God. The Word of God is very precious and uh, touches hearts, touched mine years ago, and I appreciate that. I'm saved, and I've uh, got a family here. Uh, everybody's supposedly saved. I hope everybody knows the Lord, and um, I appreciate God, what He did in our lives. Yeah. Today, I'm going to talk about creation. Creation reveals our God, all right? All around us, the things we see. Psalms 19, Psalms 19, 1, the heavens declare the glory of our God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Man, when you go out at night and look up, what do you see? Yeah. If it's not cloudy, I love going out in the wintertime. Cold, clean, clear night, you look up, boom, you see all the stars. It's awesome. I love it. Amen. I remember being up in Canada. We used to go up there. Um, trout fishing, we stayed out of cabin, and uh, man, up there at nighttime, you just looked up, you just saw that, I guess you call it the Milky Way, the thing that just twists through the sky and billions of stars, because where we were, it was complete, total darkness up there, there was no light, no city lights, no malls or anything, we were out in the wilderness, and um, it's all part of God's creation. Colossians 1.16 for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth, visible and invisible. Very important there. Visible and invisible. All things were created by him and for him. You've got to remember that. It was for him. We spend a lot of time in the outdoors, me and my wife. We, we take a ride up in the ponds. We're always up there. And some of the things that we see... I see things up there that it's God, it's perfect, perfect order. The way God has things set up, made up, and so many animals, animals that we see are unbelievable. And uh, Nehemiah 9, 6, it says, Thou, even thou, art Lord alone. Thou has made heaven, and the heavens of heavens, and with all their hosts, the earth, and all the things that are within, the seas, and all that is therein, and thou preservest them all. And the host of heavens worshipeth thee. You know, God, like I said, he has perfect order. And the deer that run around in the woods, the ones with the horns, every year they drop those horns, okay? Every year they drop the horns. And um, the wildlife around those areas where all these horns are, they, they take advantage of that. God provides for them. Let me show you some horns my son found. 
Dan, he's a horn hunter. He goes all over. He goes to, he goes to um, Kansas. He goes all over the place. If you see these horns here, okay, this is from an elk. He got this from an elk. If you look at it closely, what do you see? What do you see? You see the teeth marks? Yeah. All the chewings? See how they're just chewed up all over the place? No, no, no. Animals feed on these things. God places these things all over the forest for animals to get their vitamins and minerals. See all the chew, chew marks on them? They're all chewed up. Now, you know, it's mice, chipmunks, squirrels, all that kind of stuff. You guys, you know, can you see this? Or, but it's all, it's all chewed up. It's everything marked up, chewed up. See how the animals eat this stuff? And you wonder why they allow you to get these. It's no problem. You are allowed to get them. My son has, oh, man, he's got a, Derek, he's got a pile of what, this high of horns? He goes all over. He goes to Ohio. He goes to Kansas. He goes, he's a shed hunter. He's got things on YouTube and uh, Dan's Outdoors. I'm putting an ad out there for him or whatever. But uh, these animals eat these horns, and it gives them vitamins. It gives them minerals. <clears throat> that's perfect order. I think that's perfect order. Yeah. It's perfect order. Proverbs 6, 6 through 8. Go to the ant, thou slugger. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. I was in my yard one time. I'm looking. I saw a line of ants. I'm just watching, just a simple, they're, they're walking like this. A whole line of them right next to them, another line going this way, carrying something. I don't know what it was. It was just one's going this way, one's going this way. Nobody's like saying, hey, make a left over here, do this, go get, they're just, God just put it in them. Yeah. God put it in them. It was, a, it was such an amazing sight to see that. Ants carrying food back to their home. They drop it off and they continue right on back again. It's amazing. Yeah. It's, ama it's all God. And I remember cutting firewood in my backyard this summer. Last, well, last summer. Me and my neighbor cut. We went through an ant, uh, uh, I guess a colony, whatever it was. What do you think the first thing those ants did when we cut through that? What do you think they did? Scattered. Well, they scattered, but they scattered carrying their eggs like this. They all had an egg on them, preserving their ants. First thing they did, they grabbed an egg. They just took off with an egg. All of them had eggs, running with eggs. It's amazing. What put that up there? Why would an ant, hey, wait a minute. Hey, we're being destroyed here. We got to do something about this. Well, get our offspring. We got to get our offspring. That's the first thing we got to do. And that's what they did. They grabbed their eggs and took off. It's amazing. It's all God. It's not, not just by chance, it just happened. And I'm going to explain some other things, all right? Just have patience with me. I have bees. Bees are very incredible. Bees are. They can be very dangerous, too. You can ask Derek, because he did cut a corner, and I will mention that. Um, bees are like, I think they're the most awesomest thing around. Without bees, no food. You see the bumper stickers, no farmers, no food. It should be no bees, no food. <clears throat> bees are very important. Bees are Part of society, God gave us bees. We have three boxes. We lost a hive last year, but we still have two of them. You have the brood, the queen bees in there. She's got her drones. Drones are the bigger ones. They're the ones that breed with the queen. They don't sting. That's the only bee in a hive that doesn't sting. You can open up a beehive. You can see a big drone in there. You can go there and pick it up and let it walk around. He's not going to sting you. But the queen... She's in there, she's working, she's laying eggs, she's got the brood, 
And when these little guys are hatched, they just don't jump out of the hive and say, well, I'll see you later. I'm going to go, go visit some flowers. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Their job is to clean up around the house, take care of the queen, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, spot things up, you know, keep things clean. It's amazing. The older ones, they're allowed to go out and get the uh, nectar. Okay? Now, what happens? Bees come back, they chew the nectar, nectar, and they have, we have these racks in there, right? And they make these, this honeycomb, they fill it with honey. Moisture, there's moisture in that. You know what bees, uh, honey is? Honey is the bee vomit. The bee chews the nectar and blah! That's what it is, it's bee vomit. That's what honey is. Sorry. I, I, but that's what it is, it's bee vomit. And, what, and there's moisture in it. When they first puke that out, there's moisture in it. Then you have the bees that, that stay there and wave their wings to dry all the moisture out. To get, all the moisture's got to go. Moisture is the worst thing in the world for honey. So the bees are there, they're waving their wings, and out goes the moisture. They know when all that moisture is out of there, then they cover it with a wax. Cover it with a wax. Then we come along, spring and fall, take the hives, open the hives up. You got to use an instrument. Derek didn't use it. Oh, I'm not going to use it. This is a smoker. You put leaves and paper and stuff in here. When you open the hive up, you got, man, you got quite a few bees looking at you. You got to go like, there might be some dust in here. You know, there is dust in there, okay. Sorry, Hannah. But you got to smoke the bees, and that relaxes them. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. It relaxes them. Well, what's the smoke of? It's like paper and leaves and whatever you can make smoke. You put it, you open this thing up. That's just a charcoal dust in there now. I didn't think there was that much in there. Sorry, folks. I started sneezing here. But anyway, the smoke goes over the beat, and it just calms them down, relaxes them. Then that way you can do your work. You can pull out, you pull out these racks, you pull them out, and they're coated, coated with wax, and the honey's all in the middle of them. Men are heavy, too. They're heavy. What you do, we have a bucket inside the house. We put a 400 microgram filter in there, and we scrape off the honey and wax. It all goes into a bucket. And it goes, into a, goes through a filter. Then there's a valve at the end of the bucket, and you start filling jars up. Then after you, the rack, after you take that, um, what's the proper name for that, Derek? Frame. frame. You take the frame out and you put it in a spinner. You put three of them in there. And it spins and it gets the rest of the honey out. And that goes through a filter. And you fill it up with jars. Fill it in the jars. And then, God still has <clears throat> things figured out. You take them out of the spinner, walk outside, keep them away from your hives. That's another story. You have to keep them away from the hives. Lean them up against a wall or something like that. The bees will smell the remainder part of the honey on there. Come and clean those things up spotless. And they're ready to go again. Isn't it amazing how that works? That just happened, I guess. Evolution, right? Just happened. No. A creator. God. And I have honey here. This is our honey. Natural. Pure. Nothing to add it, like the stuff in the store. They put sugar and stuff like that in it, pasteurize it. This is pure honey. See a difference? There's a difference here. Why? This is spring honey. This is fall honey. See the difference? Dark? One sweeter than the other? Well, no, they're about the same. This has more nutrition in it. The dark honey. You try to get dark honey. Well, less, less foraging and stuff like that. It's, spring's just starting. Wild, they're dealing with wildflowers. This, they're dealing with all kinds of stuff, all kinds of flowers. In my garden, they like the asparagus blossoms, believe it or not. They go crazy over them. But it's a lot darker, a lot more nutrition.
Perfect order. Didn't just happen, perfect order. It's amazing. Then one more thing about the bees. In the springtime, a lot of times a, another honey, honey queen will come out. A bee, bee will come out and be another queen. Can't have two queens in a hive. What happens? She'll split and take a whole group of bees with her. And last year it was on the uh, apple tree out there, a big cluster. I said, Derek, we got a, we got a, um, we got a swarm out here. Derek comes to the rescue. I don't know. I think I'm a little scared. <laughs> All right, a lot scared. I don't like them, man. They scare me. So we had this special cardboard box, and Derek went up the ladder, and he opened the, took the lid off the box. It's, it's made for getting these swarms. And he shook the limb, and the whole cluster fell in there. All right? And then what he did is uh, he sprayed it with sugar water. You've got to feed them a little bit. You spray them. Then you introduce them into their new, another, uh, another box that we have. And then you're hoping... Are they going to stay or are they going to leave again? But they stayed. They liked their new home. But bees are amazing. Bees are just incredible. There's a lot more to this. I just skimmed, skimmed over it you know, to speed this thing up. The next thing on my list are beavers. Beavers are incredible. I think um, they're a pretty neat animal. Up in the pines, we go through the pines, we have a, we have a problem. We used to get down these roads and everything. The beavers have dammed up all the spillways. Now the water is up, flowing over the roads, and the state doesn't know what to do with them, you know what I mean? They're, they're just destroying the roads. They're washing the roads out. I said, oh, we've got to turn around. We got, oh, oh we've got to turn around. Oh, man, we've got to turn around. they got roads washed out all over the place. So it's like, what, you know, the state doesn't know what to do. They know what to do, but it's hard for them to do what they have to do. There's a lot of people get involved with that, you know what I mean? You know, it's like... <laughs> but anyway, it's cost, costing the state thousands of dollars to repair these roads. Thousands. But beavers are pretty interesting because we had to tear a dam out, me and my son, for somebody over somebody's house because the water just keeps building up. And, man, they, they come instantly to fix it again. They know that that dam went. How do they know that? They were... They were coming from all areas, swimming. But they saw us, and they sort of like backed up and this. But they knew that dam was broken. How do they know that? What does God put into their, into their head? All we did is like broke it open a little bit, and man, they knew water was running, and they were coming, they were flying up the stream, and they were, it's amazing. It's all God. God gave these beavers, I call it the finishing trail, a concrete trail, that flat tail. Right, George? They take that mud and smooth it out, and it, they, they use it for uh, warning other beavers, too. It's amazing. It really is amazing. Spiders, that's another thing on my list. Spiders are pretty cool. We used to take our kids down to uh, Batstow, and there would be light standards on all this, you know, along the sidewalks, and there would be, like, posts sticking out. Every one of them had a big web. So my kids are running around, they're catching these moths, and we're, like, whew, right into the web. Man, out comes the spider. They, they take this thing, they spin it like a, like a top, and they wrap it with silk or whatever it is, spider juice. <laughs> spider juice, I don't know what it is, but uh, then they stick it with their something, and, and it calms the insect down. Then the spider goes back up into the corner again. Then we just throw another one in there and another one. It's so, so neat how God has everything figured out. Carlos was just preaching here, what, last year? And we had this spider come down right here. I remember the spider, I said, the spider's going to an altar call. It's coming right down. Carlos saw it. Did you see it? Were you here, Don? We were talking about that. I remember you talking about that. I didn't see the You didn't see that spider. Because no. I knew if you'd seen the spider, you would have been out of here. <laughs> that spider was so neat. It, the spider came down. It just looked at everybody and said, ooh. And it went right back up again. And I'll never forget that. Carlos is looking like, Carlos knows, he knows. But spiders are cool. Hummingbirds, that's another one, all right? These are all basic God's creation, but nothing's basic with God. Dan had, um, my son Dan, he had um, baseball, and he played for a league in Riverside, Christian League. And the um, ceremonies at the end, they had a speaker come in. He was a creationist. He was an atheist. 
But he studied all these different things, and he said, no way could this just happen. Anyway, long story short, he got saved, and he was telling the kids about all kind of neat stuff, that uh, watermelons have even number stripes. All the ones that man messed around with made the seed this and this and this, they'll have odd number stripes. Isn't that incredible? Corn will have an even amount of kernels. The ones that man messed with made them sweet corn, this corn, that corn, they'll have an odd number. And the list goes on and on and on. It's amazing. Well, he was telling us about, he lived in, uh, he lived in Virginia, and he had these hummingbirds on his porch. They were just feeding out his feeder, feeding all summer. Fall was coming. He said, I had to take that hummingbird feeder down because if you leave it there, if it gets cold, you're going to kill them. They'll just keep feeding them. There's food. They're going to stay. And the cold will kill the hummingbirds. So he took the feeder down, and they're still there a little bit. Then all of a sudden, they're gone. They're gone. They went on their migration. Now, hummingbirds, they migrate all the way from Canada, here, around here, Virginia. They go from our place where we live all the way to Mexico or Central America. Can you imagine a little bird flying over 2,000 miles? 2,000 miles, a little tiny. Come on. Then he said in the spring, he didn't have the feeder up yet. He's on a porch, and there they are. Where's the feeder? Where's the food? The same birds came back. Came back. How is that? It's evolution, right? Yeah, right. It's God. God puts the feeder up and it starts all over again. The same ones. It wasn't different ones. It was the same ones. It's amazing. How about the motor up butterfly? It flies from here all the way to Mexico. How does a little thing that just flops around? They, they go to Mexico in winter down there. How does that do that? How do they do that? It's amazing. Here's one. Squirrels. I'm up hunting in the woods. There's four inches of snow on the ground. And I'm walking. I can see where this squirrel's going across the snow. And all of a sudden, he digs down. And I see where he came up with an acorn. And he broke, broke it open and got the meat out of, out of the acorn. And off he went. I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, I would, I'd be digging a whole place up, like, where, where's that acorn I buried? Where, where, where is it? Where is it? He knew right where it was. How could he know where that acorn was? Really? Then you follow his tracks, and he does it again. How does he know that? How does he know where the acorn is? Anybody have any ideas? Explain it to me. He wasn't digging around. He knew exactly where it was. He went down, brought it up, he ate it, and moved on to the next one. How is that? How is it? Man, I, it's, it's God. It's all God. How about wood ducks? They build their nests. They're not, they don't build their nests on the ground. They build their nests way up in the trees. And wood ducks, you know, they, they're, they're up pretty high. As soon as those ducks are hatched, as soon as they're hatched, the mother flies down on the ground. I saw this on a nature show. And she calls them. All of a sudden, one at a time, boom, boom, boom. I said, no, they're, gonna, they're all going to die. Boom. They're hitting the ground. They're, they're like, nothing's happening to them. How is that? Yeah. They, all, they all swam behind their mom <clears throat> out into the lake somewhere. It's amazing. God is so good. Yeah. God had the ark built. He, the ark was... Built to save Noah, his wife, his three daughters, and three son-in-laws. Okay. Well, what was 99% of all the work all about? To preserve his, what? His creation. God could have said, look, Noah, you've been a faithful man, you and your family. I'm going to put you over here. I'm going to destroy everything. Destroy it all. Then we'll start over with you. No, he didn't. He allowed them to build an ark for the animals, and for the family, and for the world if they wanted to come in. Noah preached for over, what, 100 years. It's got to be pretty depressing, isn't it, when nobody 
Nobody made the call to come in to the ark. It was open. The door was wide open. They didn't, they could have, you know what? They didn't have to do a thing for that 100, what, 10, 110 years? They could have watched that thing being built. And right at the end, they could have said, all right, this is your last chance. He could have just walked right in. Not, not done a thing. God would have allowed it. Not by works, man. But it didn't happen. And this ark was built mostly, I mean, to save no one and his family, but to preserve God's creation. Creation is very important, folks. Very important. Job 12, 7, 9. But ask, but ask how the beast, and they shall teach thee. Ask the beast, and they shall teach thee. And the fowls of the air, and they shall tell thee. Or speak to the earth, and it shall teach thee. And the fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee. Who knoweth not all these that the hand of the Lord hath wrought this? It's all the Lord's. The Lord, the Lord brought it. And uh, I had a doctor. I went, I went to see him in January. I asked him a question about something. Now all of a sudden, he started talking about evolution. I'm like, I'm sitting there, you know, am I, am I paying for this? Or is my insurance paying for this? And, and he's talking about evolution. And, and I, I, I couldn't take it anymore. I said, Doc, stop. I don't believe in that stuff. I believe in a creator. I said, you're a doctor. You teach. This is what I said to him. I said, you teach. You, you, you work with this human body, the blood going through the veins and the eyes and the nose and the ears and all the things and how it all works together. And I said, you believe that slime washed up on the beach and we're, we came out of that? He looked at me and said, like this, he said, you're right. That's what he said. He said, you're right. You're right. He was dumbfounded. He said, you're right. I'm going to see him next week. Just pray that I have another chance to talk to him. Amen. I'm going to give him some stuff to read, see if he'll read it. If he doesn't, well, what can I say? It's on him. It doesn't make sense. Evolution doesn't make any sense. Man is without excuse. We're, we're without excuse. Romans 1.20, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even the internal powers of the Godhead. They are without excuse. But then I hear people say, well, what about the poor natives that never heard anything? Let me just tell you something, right? God did not create Stone Age people. Okay? He did not create those people like that. They didn't do it. What it was is people that sacrificed their babies to gods, de deformed their body to wicked things to their body. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. And a reprobate mind will take you all the way back to grinding stones, sharpening stones, and living like a primitive caveman. He didn't create men like that. I saw some of these uh, TV shows where these real, I mean, they're really primitive people. But in the jungle, there was foundations of cities or something years ago, years ago. That may have been them. They may have done wicked things. And God just said, I'm giving you over to a reprobate mind. And they turn them into natives. <coughs> and it's, it's, it's. What can I say, man? You know what I mean? You can go that low. God will let, let you go. Turn you over. But, but this I do believe. If there's one native that's seeking truth, God's going to send somebody. I believe God will send somebody. The Ethiopian. He was reading the Bible. The Spirit of God said, hey, Tom. Was it, who was it? Uh, Philip, right? Philip, go. Go to that man. Philip goes to him and says, hey, you understand what you're reading? He said, no, I don't, how can I understand what I'm reading? And that man got saved. He got baptized. How about the little guy who climbed up into the sycamore tree? Zacchaeus. He, he, wanted, he was wondering what's going on. Jesus saw him and said, come on down. We're going to your house today. How about the, the soldiers with Paul? You know what I mean? The soldier that got saved and his family. 
If, if you're seeking God, if you're seeking truth, I, I believe God will send somebody. I really do. I think he'll send somebody. And believers, we are out. Uh, we are also without excuse. Luke 12, 48. For unto, for unto whosoever is much is given to him shall be much required. You know what I mean? God gave us. Didn't God take care? We're all in here. Nobody's struggling here, I don't think, right? Anybody struggling? I'm doing pretty healthy here. You know what I mean? I don't think I'm starving too much. But, but God, he wants us to go out and tell people. He wants us. He's given us much. He's, he's given us everything. And much is required, he says. Yeah. It's required. That's right. We need to go out. We need to, we need, need to tell people. And I'll tell you what, God give us, gave us his creation. We need to learn about his creation because I'll tell you something right now. If you get into a conversation with people, like there's millions of people that goes to the zoo and stuff, you know what I mean? They're, you know what I mean? They're, they're there. They, they love when a panda bear has a baby and all. They get all excited and they jump up and down. If we talk to somebody about creation, we can say, well, scientists believe in this, but, but this is what I believe in. It's, it's, it's a lot easier to get a conversation going like that. It really is. We need to know about creation. You don't have to be an Einstein, but just know a little bit about it where you can, it can draw up a conversation where you can bring Christ into it. It's a lot easier. <clears throat> Genesis 1, 31. Then God, God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, he said it was very, very, very good. I added a few more varies, but he did say it was very good. Very good. And God is, is an awesome God. He gave us so much. Psalms, um, well, let me, let me back up here. Uh, let's see, 125, Romans 125. Who changed the truth? of God into a lie and worship this and serve the creature more than the creator. That's what they're doing today. They're serving the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. It's a shame when we see these folks that just will not give glory to God. I don't know how they can just see all this stuff and just say it just happened. I just, I just, I just find it mind-boggling they can do that. Psalms 8.3. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained, what is man that you take thought of him, and that the son of man that you care for him? It's just, God, it, he has given us so much. He gave us his son to take care of us, to, to die on the cross for our sins. In the most famous verse in the Bible, it says, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, the world, he loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Folks, we have a message to get out. It's hard sometimes. We're nervous. I'm nervous about door knocking. I've got to be honest with you. I, I, it just, I have a hard time with it. But I can talk to somebody, like, out on the street or something. It's, it's weird, like... My wife was like, oh, no, he's talking. You know, oh, it's time to go now. It's like, because I can just keep talking. Like, if somebody's up in the woods and their car's on the side of the road, they could be bird watching or whatever. I always stop. I say, look, are you guys okay? You need any help? Do you need? Then they'll say something. Then next thing you know, I'm saying something. Then next thing you know, like, like we're going, like my wife's sitting there like, oh, no, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Get out, get out the popcorn because it's going to be a long, you know. But anyway. But that's, that's how I can talk to people like that. But door knocking, I, I need to get over it. I always have that uh, burning bush experience, you know what I mean? It's like, man, I, I just, you know, my teeth, teeth are chattering and breaking and snacking, and it's just, I get nervous. But God has given that to some people, a gift of doing that. Praise God for that. But we all can take part in something. We really can. We can take part in evangelizing this world in some way. God's creation is good and shows he is worthy of glory. We, as part of his creation, should be showing the world that he is worthy of glory as well. We should be doing our part also. And um, praise God, you know what I mean? We have uh, nothing to fear, really. I mean, 
I, this thing popped up on my phone. I don't know how it got there, but let me just read it to you, all right? It, it's, if I can find it here. Here we go. Just weird. It just popped up yesterday. It says, the Bible. When you carry the Bible, Satan has a headache. When you open it, he collapses. When he sees you reading it, he loses his strength. And when you stand on the word of God, Satan can't hurt you anymore. Interesting, isn't it? That was, it just popped up. I don't know why it popped up, but God said, use it. Because you were nice to share it. Mm-hmm. Well, I shared it with you guys. Pretty neat, isn't it? That's, I never heard anything like that. So um, I just thank God for his creation. I'm thankful for... Um, some of the marvelous things that he shows us that, that he created. There's so many things that you can't even even talk about that, that, that's going on in this world with creation. It's just, it's just mind-boggling. But I do appreciate God and what he did for us. Amen. The ultimate sacrifice, he died on the cross for us. And that's the message that we need to get out. So, uh, well, I hope you folks learned something today. Amen. And um, let me close in prayer. Father, I thank you, Lord, for today. Lord, Father, you, you just, your, your world that you made here, Lord, with, with all the animals and all the creation, Father, it's so glorious, Lord. Father, so many people just, they're worshiping the uh, creature, Lord. They're, they're, they don't know you, Lord. And, and Lord, I know, Lord, it's our responsibility to tell them, Lord. Help us, Father, to have the boldness, Lord. Help us to get over the fear that we have, Lord. Help us to um, not tremble, Lord. You're, you're on our side, Lord. How can we lose? We can't lose. Pray, Lord, for uh, victory, Lord. Help us, Father, to overcome fear, Lord. Help us to do our part, Father. I pray and ask this, Lord. And I pray for the speakers today, Lord. You'll bless them also, Lord. Just use them in a mighty way, Lord. I pray for this. And I pray all these things, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, folks. All right, guys. Thank you.